He holds the record for being the highest grossing comedian in the history of the world. This man, this man is responsible for us doing a 10X Growth Conference, by the way. He inspired me to put on my own tour and not just be a speaker at him. One of the highest paid actors in Hollywood and around the world. What you don't know is how shrewd he is as a businessman and a dreamer to build his own legacy as a CEO and a billion dollar empire. Ladies and gentlemen, raise the roof, call the roofer. Let's fix this place, Kevin Hart.
how do we knock off the other things that I wanted to do? And for me, that was the that was the biggest priority. It wasn't just getting big comedy, it was understanding what to do when I reached a point that I want to get to. How many tickets um, have you, have you, how many seats have you sold? Seats? Um, last year I think we did. You count seats or you count money? Which one do you do? Uh, I mean, you gotta count both. You can't, you can't ignore them, right. you know? I think our total we did, we did 170, 172 dates on my last tour. We probably did about, a million two in seats in total, like actual seats. Um, a million two in total. Because yeah. you know, we, we, we were in a position where we were doing arenas, so uh, 16,000 seat arena. Let's say you do multiple shows, you're at 32,000. You do two shows in that city. And two shows, how fat? Back to back? Same I do day. the same day. So let's say seven and 10, that's 32,000 people for that. Same day. jokes? Same show, same show, but with different personalities and different energy, but you gotta set. So, the, see, that's a joke right there. That's one of the jokes. So excited. Thank you. I uh, wish they are, they are excited. Thank you for that. Scared the shit out of me, by the way. <laughs> but, you know, you got, let's say, through the course of a weekend, 30, 60, 90, 90,000, 90,000 people per weekend. So, over the course of so many, you look and you add it, you go, wow, you do a million, two, million, five. Then on the longer tour, you and that two, two and a half, it, the numbers go. But what's more important to me are not just the numbers, but the recurring people. You know, I like the fact that people have grown with me. So uh, the fan base, the numbers, it, 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 it continues to get bigger and bigger and bigger. But I like the consistency and people saying, I remember when I came to see you here. I remember when I saw you here. And you look at it, you got a foundation and you got a story. And the story that you're telling, people are so invested in it. I think to me, that's the, that's the best thing about the numbers uh, behind the arenas, behind the tours. It's the investment. What, what was the revenue from, that, from the last tour? Right. It's huge, right? I mean, you think we did? Probably did 100 plus million last tour. You, you can't make 100 million. You can't do 100 million just telling jokes. You gotta own the show. Well, you, I'm at a point where the business and touring is one that I control. So uh, if I do a building, I don't need, because that joke then becomes a comedy special. That comedy special becomes an IP. I own that IP, and I take that IP, and I sell that IP and license it to other platforms that will go and hold it for set amount of times. They gotta give it back, which means I can continue to grow these IPs that all start from telling the jokes, which means that I now have a catalog. What's the benefit of the catalog? Benefit of the catalog is being able to fucking put yourself in a position to deal with studios and networks at the highest level. You now have to respect me as a business. So when you see this and you understand that, you grow within it. So I'm now a businessman because I love to create. In the world of entertainment, you have no entertainment without, without creativity. So you need a me. You need a guy that's gonna come up with movie concepts, television concepts, and reasons to make the world land feel better. I am now a necessity, which makes me an entity. I'm a fucking business. So <laughs> There should be no line, okay? And here's what I mean when I say there should be no line. When you when you put lines, that means you're giving yourself sometimes limits. That means you're you're giving yourself destinations that you don't feel can be crossed. Um, the two complement each other for me. Uh, entertainment and business go hand in hand. If you can be the CEO on both sides of the fence, then you're dealing with yourself and others at the highest level. So I'll give you guys an example. Um, there's a real goal that I had to make the world laugh. That's a goal, right? And the goal started off with me just being a comedian, traveling the world. That goal has been transferred down to me creating a network. So Laugh Out Loud is a network. I said, well, if I'm making the world laugh, how do I 
put other people in a position to do the same. Everybody doesn't feel like they had an opportunity. I'm gonna create a network that's based on giving the younger generation an opportunity to be seen and possibly- Other ta new talent. Uh, new talent. And possibly uplift, generate, motivate their career to go on and be bigger and better. If I do that, then I'm really accomplishing my goal at hand of making the world laugh. I did it by setting up another entity where I could uplift the younger comedy, the younger comedians, male, female, whoever, come and be on my platform, be a part of my network. I'm gonna give you this shot, I'm gonna give you exposure, but at the same time, my business is thriving because if you're a network in your studio, the lack of diversity is a real issue. So my comedy comes to you in color. I'm bringing you all ethnicities from all over the globe, and that's my job to bring you comedy in a different perspective. So you now have to deal with me as a busy person. I have to deal with this. Kevin Hart. It's something that we have to deal with Kevin Hart. That was true with me. Like it, or, like it or not, you have to deal with it. And I, I think that uh, at this point in my career, you know, I'm 40 years old. And oh, I'm 40, 40 years old, man. Yeah, I mean, look, I'm. I'm, Look good. I, I'm trying, I'm trying my best. I've been in this business for over 20 years. So what am I really leaving? What's the real imprint that I'm leaving? And a, a big thing that I talk about that I want you guys to all understand. This is so simple, what I'm about to say, but yet so profound. You're writing a story. You're writing a fucking story. Whether you believe it or not, your life can be the equivalent of a book. When you read a book, you go through chapters. In each chapter, you got some good shit, you got some bad shit. But when you close that book at the end, you should be able to talk about what you read. That book should have a conclusion. Ask yourself in life, what do you want your conclusion to be? What's your story? When it's all said and done, what do people want to say about you? What effect, what imprint did you have? What do your kids want to remember about you? What are the closest people to you going to be able to talk about when your name comes up? I want my story to be as great as possible. I want to fucking have an amazing story. And in that story, you got some ups and downs. You got some bullshit. But at the end of that story, you gonna celebrate what the fuck I did because I did it at a high level. That's my, that's my, that's my job. That's what you put it into me. What, what did you do? Like, you, 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 it, wasn't, it wasn't easy for you 20, 20 years ago. Absolutely. Not. You had a, it, it, it's part of the hard, the struggle you had getting, mm -hmm. break, getting a breakthrough. Is that part of why you created the the uh, distribution for the uh, town? Yeah, I mean, you know, as comedians, people don't understand how hard our journey is. You know, you're performing in bars, lounges, hubs. People are creating what they think are environments for comedy. Uh, getting to comedy clubs aren't the easiest thing because comedy clubs have a roster, a very small roster, and it's politics involved. Uh, which is why you got... Like, like uh, what, what are the politics? Well, just politics. Who you know and... What Could, I couldn't just go do a Friday night 15 minutes. No shot. You can't just walk into a comedy club and get up. It's a lot of politics going on. You gotta be seen, you gotta be approved. You gotta put what they would consider to be your time in. Uh, this is why comedians create what's called an underground circuit. That underground circuit is where they make money but you're never gonna really be seen by the people that can possibly progress your career. Me going through that and seeing that, I said, well, how can I change that now that I'm in a position of high level success? Creating that network was a reason of how. And now I got a real firm brand on a significant outlet that other comedians can now embrace. So at least I'm doing something that acts as my part in uplifting and growth. I think within the generations to come, you should look back and say, where are we getting better, where are we improving? I'm just trying to do my side of that by giving that. Hopefully Lab Out Loud Network will be just that, and you'll have your stars of tomorrow that will be elevated from the platform that I'm creating. That's the goal. So, so you're not yeah. When would you start doing comedy? Start doing comedy at 18, 18 years old. What were you doing before that? Selling sneakers. Yeah. How were you good? Uh, I was one of the best sneaker salesmen in the world. I say you fuck sneaker like that. Tell me what you want. Nine and a half. You wear nine and a half? I wear nine and a half. What do you do? You want it? You want to I got a bad ankle. I got a bad ankle right now. Do you supinate or 
I'm probably, does your foot roll inward or outward? I'm married. I'm married. I'm married. I'm married. I'm married. Okay, well, I'm going to assume that if you got bad ankles, you probably prolate. So what I want to do is I'm give you a shoe with stability. My stability, I'm talking about something with condensed EVA, maybe polyurethane. I would recommend you have a something with a strong shoe. You know, you gotta, you gotta, you gotta make the person understand why said purchase is right for them, why this makes sense for you, why you will become better because of this. Putting this in your life is going to do this for you. And comedy, for me, I'm painting pictures. I take my personal life, I'm putting it out there to make people understand that you're not the only one that goes through shit. I just find a way to land in my shit. I just find a way to find a positive and any negative. So what stand-up comedy actually is for me, that's my therapy. I talk about the good, the bad, the ugly, and I make light of it because there's no pride and no real value in holding on to negative. It doesn't make anything change. It doesn't make anything better. The day is still going to continue to go on. The sun shines the next day with or without you, regardless of your attitude. So the longer that you choose to hold on to bullshit, the longer that, that bullshit takes up some time that you can spend doing better shit. So comedy is my way of putting better shit out there. Yeah, and you, like, you, you don't figure out how to monetize. Yeah. Uh, like, we, we were talking about TikTok in the back, and I said, yeah. I don't understand TikTok, and you said to me, I don't understand it. And that's how I use TikTok. I use TikTok by doing TikTok inappropriately. So my whole thing with TikTok is not knowing how to do a TikTok. So I just say that. Yeah, he, he just leaned into the liability. Yeah, just basically a deficit. I'm fucking honest. And when I do a TikTok, I just say the word TikTok. And I, and I say, you want to get my TikTok? Then you go, yeah. I'm like, all right, we're doing a TikTok. I don't know if we are or not. But I'm posting. <laughs> and then people will see my TikTok. So that's how my TikTok goes. <laughs> Get old. I'm not saying the shit like I used to. I had a little kid explain it to me, and I was like, I think we just did a TikTok. <laughs> I, I, just, I just posted that, so I ran, I run with that. Those are my TikToks. But social media, I mean, look, that's the benefit of social media. Social media has pros and cons, okay? Right now, I'm gonna give you the pros. The pros of social media are that we can invest a high level of time into engaging with the world in a way that we've never been able to before. I can talk to people all over the globe. And because of that, they can talk back. This is cool. I can build up an audience. I can build a fan base. I can grow because of what social media allows me to do. The bad is that everybody has an opinion. Everybody has an opinion now. And everybody has a place to go to make that opinion be felt. And because of that, you get a lot of back and forth you get a lot of high volume negativity. Is it more than a positive? No, but that's what the internet does very well. The internet is very good at making a negative seem a lot louder than a fucking positive. You ever ask yourself, how come you don't really hear about good shit? It's not the good shit that's happening. You choose to ignore it. You choose to not listen to it the same way that you listen to the fucking bad shit. Right now, if I come in here and I say, man, I just met these five kids outside, they got these scholarships, they all go to college next year. You're like, oh, that's dope. If I come in and I say, motherfucker got hit by the car, the back of the lane came off. That shit's gonna travel. It's gonna travel. It's gonna travel. Y'all gonna start talking to me about the motherfucker outside, his lane came off. What the motherfucker lane came off? Outside, where? Outside, he ain't got no lane. Y'all gonna fucking talk about it. You ain't gonna repeat shit about the scholarships. Just because. Ask yourself why. Think about it. Ask yourself why. It's the little shit that we ignore as people that really makes me laugh. If you watch the news, you watch the fucking news. You think the news is all bad. The news got some good shit in it too, but you don't hear it because the bad shit grabs your attention more. Ask yourself why. It's a problem with us in our fucking society. We are in love with bad. 
And that's what social media, that's what social media is elevated. It's elevated to bad. So ask yourself, are you a part of the good? Or are you a part of the fucking bad? Really ask yourself. Because if you like in the bad, you're part of the fucking bad. If you spread the good, then you're part of the fucking good. So you gotta find out the future. Because you're 
giving them some high energy that you have based off of you. Love you. If you love you, man, this shit is an easy route. I don't care what, what you going to do. As long as you love you, you're going to be good. Problems are not problems when you have a high level of understanding and confidence that you're going to evolve. I'm always going to be okay. I'm always going to be okay. After that, you obsessively went on a tour. Yes. So After my question my, was not about the sitcom. It was the first sitcom that hit me hard. That got canceled. It was called The Big House. The reason why it hit me hard is because, you know, I was young. I'm 22, 23 years old. And this is what I thought was going to launch me into the highest level of success. You know, this is the show that I was a writer on. I was a creator on. I was a star of. Oh, my God. This is it. Life is about to change. And you know when you when you when you get that feeling of I finally did it, and something happens and that feeling is instantly taken away. It's a gut check moment, right? And you got to ask yourself, how how am I going to respond to real gut checks? And have I ever been gut checked? Have I ever truly been tested? This was a test. This was a test to see if I really was passionate about the craft that I'm talking about and I'm boasting about. Because if I was, then I'm gonna let this little step back be just that. It's a minor step back. I'll recover. I'll be able to fucking make it. But, 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 but at the time, it felt like a major step back. At the time, it felt like a major step back. And then, and then to me, it looks like you have, you became a, a, an obsessive, almost a beast on your tour. Because I didn't like the fact that people kept telling me what I couldn't do. When my show got canceled. When my show got canceled, I had a bunch of people around me that were managers and agents at the time, and the conversation was, just wait. Sit by the phone, we'll figure something out. You're waiting on auditions. You're waiting on these opportunities to come. And I was like, well, what am I doing to create the opportunity? How do they know I'm sitting here waiting? That's the question I asked myself. I said, how do people know I'm sitting here waiting on them to fucking call me. Like, I don't understand how that works. How do they know that I'm home sitting by the fucking phone? Do they know? Do they know that I'm home? That's what I ask myself. Do they, fuck, do they know I've been here for fucking three months sitting by the goddamn phone? Ain't nobody called. And I was like, they not gonna call, dickhead. Cause you're not, you're not creating the call. I'm not doing shit to make you call me. Did he call me a dickhead? No. <laughs> I said, I'm not doing anything to create a call. So I said, Kevin, go do what you love and do it at the highest level and go make somebody call me. So I got up and I put everything I had into stand-up comedy. And before I knew it, what once didn't exist started to exist. You told me that my show, it didn't go. And now that it didn't go, I gotta wait for an opportunity and I gotta build the fan base. So not only did I go out and I built that fan base on my own, I started to sell tickets. When I started to sell tickets, that revenue, well, that's real analytics, that's real data. So when I'm now talking to you, and you're telling me that said movie, we don't know how it's gonna do, or we don't know if what you do is gonna transfer, well, I got tons of box office revenue that says you're wrong. So now I've created an opportunity. So when you took one from me, I came back stronger. You used it. It's fuel oh, yeah. that, that, that set back. It was fire. It was fire. It was added motivation for me to do more for me. It wasn't, it wasn't for anybody else. It goes back to what I'm saying about you versus you. You closed the door on my face and you fucking took something that I thought was mine. So now it's my job to go back and get what I still know is mine. It's mine. Oh man, it's my guy. Okay, now he was talking about patience, mm -hmm. and he talked about how hey, you can't be frantic. 
mm -hmm. ranting. But but you you, you like, like get a little bit for energy. Mm -hmm. what, what, what what is that? That balance between the frantic, the push, the well, assessing, and then and then also the patience. I understand. I understand what he means when he says patience. Uh, patience is understanding that everything is going to happen today. Um, everything that's worth wanting and 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 you know lusting over uh, should come with a high level of time to achieve. So understanding that is important. Understanding that. It's not gonna be easy, and I'm gonna have to grind to get it. And I'm gonna believe that no matter what, I'm eventually gonna get there. I, I processed that early on. The frantic side for me, or the side of aggression, that part came from, once again, just being told that you can't do. So when I was told I wasn't funny enough, I was told I wasn't a good actor, I was told that mm, you're not really going to work on TV or have that opportunity because you can't have one. Everybody only gets one shot. You start hearing all of that shit. It was it 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 set some fuel in me to go. Well, I believe that I can get as many shots as I want if I'm willing to create them. So my friend it became in the high level of creativity behind what I wanted to do. I was still also willing to be patient in achieving said goals because I knew that I was going to do the work to get there. I was willing to do whatever it takes to get there. So my patience came from saying, if I do work, I'll get the reward. A lot of people don't want to do the fucking work. Um, I know you had Scooter Braun here, right? Scooter told me something that was so, that was so amazing one time. Because we talked, he's a good friend. He said, Kevin, here's what separates me from everybody else. He said, if they were given $5 million out mm -hmm. to say whoever can hit a Major League Baseball pitcher's pitch, come out to said baseball field and take your swing. He said, when they say that for $5 million, he said, there's going to be so many people that come out. The line is going to be miles and miles and miles. He said, everybody's going to get up there and they're going to take a swing. He said, but not many people are going to go get back in line and wait to get another swing. He said, because after somebody takes that first swing, they'll go and they'll look at the line and they'll go, that line too fucking long. I'm not waiting back in that line again. I'm going to be in that line for fucking two years. There's so many people there. I'm not going to take two years to swing at that back and possibly miss. He said, I'm going to do it until nobody else is there because I'm going to keep swinging. He said, Kevin, you're that type of guy. I said, Scooter, I would probably beat you in going and running back to get in the fucking room. <laughs> I said, that's the type of guy I am. So when you see certain things and you see, you see certain moments, they add these metaphors and tie-ins to life. How many times have you seen lines that have been a part of something that you really wanted to do that you said, I'll do that shit next time. That line too long. If you're not willing to wait, to wait that line then, what makes you think you're gonna be willing to wait that line now when it comes down to fucking line? You gotta fucking teach yourself along that way to be persistent, to be patient. If you don't build that capability, then you're never gonna have it. You don't develop it overnight. It's fucking, it's nurtured. It's developed. It's something that you gotta work at. So for years, I've waited in lines. Wait, years, when's the last time you waited in any line? Well, it's different now. You can't pop up. It's a big thing. I don't want you to think I'm still waiting in lines. That's, I work hard to not wait in lines no more. I'm saying, when I had to wait in a line, I did. My kids wait in line. Okay? Prime example, when my kids go to the amusement park with me, it's an experience. We go right into the rides and we get on those rides fast. You know why? It's because of your dad. It's not because of you. So when you go and you and your friends are there, you say, Dad, can you set up said things so we don't have to wait in line? No. I don't have to wait in line. You don't have to wait in fucking line. You don't have to do it. You don't have to wait in line. You don't get the benefit that I get from waiting in lines all this time. This came from waiting in fucking lines. So something as small as this metaphor 
story is so much bigger than you realize it is. So now when my kids go and they go to these amusement parks and they wait in these lines, it's not a conversation. When they come back with me and they don't, it's such a benefit, but now it's a one. Because now I want to do whatever dad did so I don't have to wait in the lines like my dad. How do I put it that way? Kids want to go to the park with you all the time. Well, I don't, I don't go all the time, so that's a bit. I, I get sick on roller coasters. I can't do shit these two. <laughs> you met my two little girls. Probably not. Go ahead. Two little girls in the back. Yes, I did. They were just like, they're, they're just a man. What's it like to have people look at you like, uh, you're like a little kid? Like, I don't know. Like, 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 at the end of the day, if you have the attitude of, I remember what the bottom was, there's a fear of always getting back to the bottom. So within that fear, you don't know who can be a part of that demise. And if there ever was, who could be a part of the possible progression to get back? So meeting people is a bonus to me too. So when I meet people and they tell me, oh my God, Kevin, I love you, I'm a fucking fan, I make sure that I embrace it back because I don't get to where I am without you. So that moment that we had is a moment for both of us. It's not just you. So, I don't know. How, how much is that fear? The fear, that, that, that fear. Where, where does it sit with you? Like the fear of, hey, all this could go away. It's, that's a big fear, man. Uh -huh. especially, especially knowing the people that would suffer the most. You know, the biggest thing in building an enterprise, building a company, are the people that believe in whatever the vision is that you have. To go and work for somebody or work for their company, yes, you're taking a job, but I'm also <laughs> taking belief that this opportunity is going to eventually become so much more for me in my life. So there's a lot of people that now have families, that have lifestyles, that have homes, that work underneath me. So my failure becomes their failure. So the fear is letting down the people that believe in me the most. So that's why I operate differently. That's why I try to stay as focused and online as I possibly can. Because when I missed that, I saw a reaction from the people that fucking really could suffer. I saw what I didn't see. And the biggest learning curve is always- The other people dependent upon you. Yes, that's, a, that's something that you gotta learn. You know, you don't, you don't you don't get it, nobody gives you a handbook, you gotta learn it. So with me and being a CEO, I didn't, I didn't study CEO, CEO school. I didn't fucking go to business school. That, so, that wouldn't, you didn't miss anything. I didn't, I, didn't, I, didn't, I didn't do that. So all of the things that are now happening, it's education. You're, you're in a crash course learning fucking school. And these ups and downs are fucking monumental moments of information. So for me now, when I look at this and I say, okay, Kev, here's why you need to always live in a position of we're not gonna go back here. We're not gonna get too comfortable because getting comfortable is when things can fall apart. I don't wanna be comfortable. I don't wanna live with the mindset of nothing's gonna change, it's gonna be like this forever. Because when it isn't, now what the fuck do I do? I thought that it would be. I've been in this unrealistic mindset for so long. What, what, what do you do with your money to prepare for that? Do smart things. Uh, I heavy investment, real estate. We just started with- uh, Who loves real estate? Uh, real estate. Uh, real estate. I, I love real estate. And you know, real estate is just one thing that you know where your money is. That money's in the ground. So regardless of what's going on in the world, people are always gonna need places to do business, places to live. They're always gonna need places. So the more that you can achieve the, the, the buy or the ownership of these places, uh, the more that you're always gonna have revenue coming back to you. You're also putting yourself in a position to always go out and borrow or get because I have these things to leverage. He's so got your money! The more, the more that you, uh, I guess you could say, the more that you get, the more that you can do. And you know, sometimes I think people think it's a far-fetched goal to, to get, and it's not really. It's not that hard 
when you gain the understanding of it. The game of Monopoly is a real game. It's a real fucking game. And when you play Monopoly, did you repeat that? I don't know that everybody The game of Monopoly is a real game. When you play Monopoly, the goal is to buy up as much property as you can and get people to pay you for that property when they land on it. Rent. Rent. That's the fucking the rent. Game. So when when I look at now my success, I'll tell you, here's 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 a uh, Here's something that I do. And this tell is tell us something that I can oh, do. Oh, oh, this is something that, that you guys don't know. Let's say I do a movie, right? That movie is whatever the fuck it is. I make a nice amount of money to do a movie. Take that number, split that number in half. Half of that number goes to the government. That's the IRS. No matter what. We're talking about 25 million to let's, well. let's, We can just call it a number. I don't want people knocking me in the head when I leave here. Let's just call it a number. Okay? <laughs> Let's say that number is a number. No matter what, when you make money, split it in half. Split it in half right away. Don't put the money in your bank account and look at it as you got all that money, because you don't. Half of that money is not yours. So right away, put it over here. Create a fucking account, call it the tax account. Put half of that there, so as you make money, you always put this money in the tax account. I never have to worry of giving the government their money, because that money's over there. I don't look at that like it's my fucking money. I'm never gonna touch that money, cause it's not mine, it's government. So now off of my half, what do I wanna do? I'm gonna take another half. This half is going over here. This half is for my next real estate investment. I don't know what it is, I haven't figured it out yet, but I'm putting it over here, so when I do figure it out, I got there to buy. So now I'm only, living, I'm only living off a quarter of my financial gain. I split it in half and I took a quarter. You only get in debt. You only get in debt when you don't understand the breakdown of your finances. Right now I'm doing the deal. So you buy the panic from the the, the, the last quarter like How about when I well my my reason for watches is because there's nothing more valuable than time to me. So I spend money on time pieces per project because those time pieces go with me putting my time to something that meant a lot. So each watch that I wear, it's not just me wearing a nice watch just because, it's tied into a project that I did, and I spent this time. So if I got on a fucking expensive watch, you look at it as I'm probably spending some fucking crazy money, well that watch could be tied to Jumanji's billion dollars in box office. Right it could be, this, yeah. this is stainless steel pack, this is when we did Cold as Balls the first season, and Cold as Balls went on to achieve, I think, 80 million views. From the 80 million views, our show became a success, and we then agreed to do two more seasons. I celebrated, I got my stuff in stainless steel. Reason why, I'm in the cold fucking tub, this is the color of the cold tub. Everything is a tie to There's nothing, there's nothing, I'm so good now and well broken down. Everything's got a reason. Everything's got a reason. So here's what I mean, when, another thing I want to add to the finances. What I found that uh, some people really suffer from is financial literacy, right? Like that's a real, that's a real problem. People don't understand that, but it's a real problem. We spend money when we get it as if it's a recurring thing when it's not. I know a lot of people that get a check, and as soon as they get that check, they go fuck that check off. And I want the look of what comes with that check. I'm not getting another check like that for a while, but when I got it, boy did I live. I had a good time when I got that check. Instead of understanding, how do I make this money make sense and actually have more value and bang for it? How do I prepare myself for the next month when I don't normally have money? That's the part that's getting a little fucked up for me. So you know what I'm gonna do? I'm gonna treat this money differently. So when I get to this month, I'm well prepared. Oh, now that I'm prepared, I wanna do this again. So when I get to the month after, I got two double bangs of being prepared. Oh shit, I done saved up four months that give me protection and comfort for when I don't have money. Oh wow, so I basically have money. I'm now in a position to do what I once couldn't do because I have value from the money that I made because I've done all of the things I needed to do and at the same time saved. Have you always said that? Yeah. Have you always said that this way? With money? Yeah. No. No, you gotta fuck it off to know what to do right. You gotta make mistakes. Once again, you don't do anything right the first time you do it. I can't tell you what I did with the first month of some money I made. What was the first real money you made? First real money? Uh, well, 
I think there's different definitions for real money. The, the first lump sum of money that I got, I remember I was like 21, and I got $250,000 as a development deal, and nobody explained taxes to me. Nobody explained uh, an entity, an LLC. The money just came, they took some of it out, I spent it, and looked up and owed more money to the government, and had to pay that, was left with negative balance, and was left with a hell of a marker of money that had to be paid. So I was in debt for like two years, trying to figure out how to pay the money that I owed to the government. So the money that I was making to stand up, I still had to pay the taxes on that money, so I ended up being in double debt, because this money is being used to pay the government from what I owed them up here, and I'm not able to pay the taxes from that money from what I owe right here. So holy shit, I'm three years behind. What the fuck is happening? I'm a Midwestern I'm, I'm, I'm three years behind. So when that happened, I said, you know what? When I get out of this situation, which I eventually will, I'm never coming back to it again. I'm gonna get the information that I should have had so when I got this. What did you do to get the information? Did you start reading? I, I talked to people with money. I was, in, I was in some rooms with people that were making money, and I asked questions that some people think are too cool to ask. They said, oh, I'm 20 from that. I don't know what to do. Oh, okay, but I don't know what he wanted me to do with it, but I'm gonna say, God bless you. See, this is where I get scared, and I didn't mean it just that, right? Good thing you got people. You're probably a nice guy. Little motivation. Sure, he's a nice guy. Inspiration. I get it. Okay, but I'm small. So guys, just, you know, <laughs> give, me, give me a piece of something far away so I know what's happening first, and then we can engage. But, you know, if you just come up and do this, I'm gonna assume something else. Now, I'm not saying I will not leave, but I was about to leave you. I don't know what you're doing. <laughs> Okay? I don't know what's happening, but I just want you guys to be honest. I definitely saw it happen, and as he was walking, I was like, he don't look like he's stopping. And uh, <laughs> he's going on up the steps. And I was like, no, and I saw somebody come in. But I was about to go right through that fucking door right here. <laughs> so I just want to let you know, very nice. Uh, so, <laughs> I apologize. No, stop, man, it's fine. Enthusiasm. Uh, Sometimes enthusiasm can be, like, like, it can be a little... It's fine. Give me shit. Uh, so, <laughs> when, what I did about... I think it's important for people to understand that you can take it too far. Like, like, but you gotta take it too far to find out what too far is. Like, he didn't make a mistake unless he does that over and over and over again. Yeah. For now, no, of course. Uh, no, okay. now he's getting his ass kicked out of his <laughs> <laughs> And there should be a penalty when you fuck up. Of course. There should be a penalty. Of course. My penalty to not asking questions when I made money was fucking off the money at home. The, the benefit was now putting myself in a position to try to not make the same mistake. How do I do that? Well, I'm not gonna be the cool guy that don't ask questions. I'm actually gonna ask the uncool questions. I'm actually not afraid to come off dumb. I'm actually not afraid to come off uneducated about what I don't know. And that's a, that's a talent. That's a talent. Like, being the cool person that wants to know everything that's not, there's no benefit in knowing everything. You can't know everything. You just can't. You can know a lot about something, but you can't know everything. So somebody knows a little bit more than what you do that can help you know more. So, so you're willing to be Kevin Hart, superstar, that doesn't know? I, I don't know a lot. Yeah. I, I mean, right now I just started uh, Heartbeat Ventures. So I'm in the VC world, and the goal right now is I've done a great job of building a portfolio, right? At one point, I didn't understand the stock market. I didn't understand how people operate in the stock market. So you're telling me I take my money, I give it to somebody, they invest that money, and then I make money from what they did with it? Yeah. I know he's doing the right thing with my money. Well, you gotta find somebody to trust. I don't trust him, I ain't gonna do it. Well, Kevin, this is how you gain wealth. You sound like a fucking scheme to me. I ain't gonna do it. <laughs> I ain't gonna do it. I don't like it. I don't understand it. I ain't gonna do it. But then, you get in other rooms, and you get around real wealth. You get around real conversation. Oh wait, this thing that people have been talking about, it really does exist. It really does exist at a high level. I don't have to go into this full steam ahead. Maybe if I start off small, get comfortable, understand it, maybe it's something that I can find some success in. I was ignorant to it, so I didn't want to do it. Let's remove that ignorance, let's educate ourselves, 
and let's see if I can find a love. Oh shit, I found a love. I got an investment portfolio. Oh shit, I'm a part of some of the biggest companies that exist today. You would never know, but I am, because I invest in so much. Oh shit, you know what people do? They start these investment fucking firms and they raise money. And then what they do with the money they raise, they got a team of people that act as a fucking unit and they go out and invest and this team makes money together. I can put together a team. I can be a VC. I'm gonna go get people to invest in me and my VC and I'm gonna ensure that we have success because now I'm a bankable person to do it with based on the success that I've now built and earned. So I've learned and gained success. I did it by not being afraid to get the information that I was ignorant to. So I said it to say, just because you don't know doesn't mean it doesn't exist. It's just that you don't know. I thought that what I didn't know was fucking just stuff that you making up. It's bullshit, which is why I missed out on some of the biggest opportunities in the world. It's an interesting thing that people, it appears to me that like, poor people call everything a scam. Yeah. And the top of the food chain says, there's an opportunity here, I just don't quite understand. Yes. Well, here's the thing though. Are poor people wrong for calling everything a scam? They're being scammed. So naturally, if I'm in a position and I am being scammed, because everything around me is set up for me to fail, unless, unless I'm educated or somebody says, hey man, you gotta stop going there. You gotta stop going over here. When people go over here, they move different. I came up in the fucking hood. If you look in the hood, you hear about it. There's liquor stores and check cashing places. You know why? Because they know that the people in the hood aren't smart enough to open up bank accounts. They're gonna get a check, they're gonna cash it, and it's a liquor store right next to it. So you're gonna get your check, and you're gonna buy this liquor, and then you're not gonna have no more money. Let's just put that around them. Let's also put a bunch of shit that's easy and cash available. We don't want you to gain credit. We want you to be cash driven. That's how we keep the poor poor. It's not until you understand it that you can help. That's true. Why don't we do a turn again? Why don't we do a turn again and call don't be poor too? Listen, it's 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 when you when you really break this stuff down. After talking to people that break it down for you, it just changes your perspective, which is why I don't judge, which is why I don't, I don't hold anybody to a certain standard because I've learned that there's so many different standards that exist. So for me now, it's about putting myself in position to just constantly grow. When you, when you talk about you know, people that are less fortunate, once they understand how to possibly become more fortunate, then we'll see more change. But there's a major chain that has to be broken of reoccurrence. So for me, it's dealing with Chase. I'm with JP Morgan Chase. I now have a deal with them, and that deal is to go back into the urban communities and educate these low-income households and these kids on finances in a way that they can do. It's okay, what else can you do to break a major chain? Well, the prison reform. A friend of mine, Michael Woodman, Meek Mill, they got in, they got into um, they got into a a nonprofit organization and they found a real problem with people that have been incarcerated and getting out of jail and being on probation. When you're on probation and this record and blemishes on your record, it really does prohibit you from doing anything to improve or get work. But the system of being incarcerated is there to put you in jail, make you learn a lesson so you come out and do better. But I can't do better because you don't let me move on from my mistake. So all of this stuff wraps yeah. into what I've been saying from the beginning. We're supposed to fuck up, but you gotta be given a chance to make right. So when you fuck up or you see other people that have, you give them the tools that they need to make right. I've seen the hood, I've seen the urban community fuck up. I'm a black man and now has become a millionaire. I can't keep this information to myself. I'm coming back to get y'all because I want to see more of us.
appreciate your insight uh, and your success. Thank you, man. I appreciate you as well. What, 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 what is the term? What would the term 10x make you? Wow, that's a great question. Um, first of all, I love the definition that you have behind you in general. You know, um, for me, it's consistency. It's consistency, and you know what? It's a, it's a high level of, what's the word? Is it perseverance? How do you say the word? Is it perseverance? Perseverance, perseverance right? Um, and belief. Because the idea of doing something 10 times is a big idea. And I talk a lot about patience. I gave a lot of metaphors um, that went with doing things in repetition and understanding what that repetition does. It, it, it allows you to grow. For me, the 10X is simply about growth. Personal growth and consistency. Uh, I wouldn't be where I am today if it wasn't for my personal growth. And I'm a better man today than I was yesterday. And it's not because of the financial success, it's because of the personal success. Because I've been able to set goals and achieve, that's allowed me to win on the highest level. And those goals can be small or big, but when you set out to do something and you do it, you're separating yourself from a large portion of the world today. A large portion of the world today isn't goal-oriented. A large portion of the world is comfortable with just being convenient. A large portion of the world is comfortable with just things, simply being okay. When you're not, you're different. Be different. Be a fucking high level of different. If you're not gonna be nothing else, speak out. I stand out because of my version of 10 minutes. My version of 10 minutes allowed me to stand out. And when I stood out, I fucking showed out. When you allowed me to show out, well, God damn it, you stuck with me. Because now I know what it feels like to show out and win. There's no going back. You don't go backwards. It's all about progression, not digression. So, the people that are in this room, I'm gonna assume that you're here to progress. I'm gonna assume, I'm gonna assume that you're here because you want the most out of life. It doesn't come from you doing nothing to go fucking get it and obtain it. Everybody wants to be famous, but don't nobody wanna do the work. Go do the work, man. Put the time and effort and energy into you and the benefits will come through. It's that simple. It's not fucking rocket science. It's the most simplest shit in the world. Some people just can't see it because they got a hard time believing what they don't fucking see is real. It's real. What you want, you can go get. Go get that shit. Don't let nobody tell you you can't get it. Go get that shit. You ain't gonna get it. You ain't got your shit. You wouldn't have got your shit, so keep putting those people in the right position for them to go get their shit. You in the room of go-getters, man. So leave this bitch and go get it. It's that simple. Pick it up.